-hmm. You know, um, as much as I did know at that time, and I didn't know a lot, yes, all I did know was that I was on trial, yes, and I was found not guilty, and I was very happy about that, yes. But obviously, um, there was this issue of the expiration of the protection order. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as much as the judge maybe didn't think about it, yes. As I remember it, it was probably a Tuesday, the 24th of July, that we actually had the trial. Yes. Yeah. But it was going to expire on the 12th. Yes, actually the 13th would have been the first day of it no longer being enforceable. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, that gave you one week, two weeks, yes. Mm -hmm. And you could have, yes, uh, you could have given me notice that that was what you wanted to do. <laughs> now, since you did know where I was at, <clears throat> I would have then said to the judge, well, my record was expunged. Yes, there was no criminal record in the state of Washington. Now, you decided to reissue two temporary protection orders and a permanent order for protection. Yes. While I was on trial for the false accusation of violating this protection order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was no reason for me to appear in court because if the verdict had been guilty. Yes. Then I probably would have had some sort of jail time, though I did already go to jail at that point. <laughs> and I might have had a fine. Yes. Mm hmm. Now, the judge could say, well, Mr. Budnick, you'll have to spend uh, 10 days in jail. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Probably that's what he would have said. Yes. Then I would have been on probation for another 355 days. Yes. And a $500 fine. Pooch! <coughs> now I was on probation. Yes. The petitioner had the right to have the protection order reissued with the condition of probation for the next... <laughs> Now I'm suing you for that. <laughs> <laughs>